Hi, on today's The Truth Project show, I'm going to continue exposing the methods and the works of the enemy of how he set out to deceive people, even if we believe in Jesus and we're believers and followers, he still can deceive. So watch the next show. Stay tuned. Did you know that there is a world beyond what you can see with your physical eyes? How can you know what comes from the light versus the darkness? Alan Strudwick wants to help you discern God's truth from the dangers of false religion, false teachers, pseudoscience philosophies, and demonic influences waiting to deceive even the very elite. And now, here's your host of The Truth Project, Alan Strudwick. Hi. Welcome to The Truth Project. I'm Alan Strudwick. I'm really starting to enjoy getting into some of the meat of this for the shows. And continuing from last show, last week, I want to go deeper into some of these more methods that the enemy uses. And as I said before, just to remind you, I have the credentials to be able to bring forward these methods because these are some of the methods that I was taught and used when I was a leader in the New Age. One of the other things that um, we were commissioned with, if that's the right thing, by leaders in, in the New Age, was that we had to convince the world that there in fact is no real hell or devil. And so we would do many different strategies and methods planning to do that. And the reason we did is because if you take out that there's no enemy and you take out then there's no, um, there's no opposition, then all the things that go wrong, all the things that are bad in the world will be blamed on a God all be blamed on humanity or man, but primarily on God. And that's the, that was the, one of the major plans of some of the strategies that we implemented. Because then if you, you have no devil, then who's the reason for sickness? Who's the reason for pain? Who's the reason for people dying? Who's the reason for uh, children dying? And who's the reason for kids getting leukemia and dying and all that sort of stuff? Well, then it has to be blamed on God if you've taken an enemy out. And so that was one of our major uh, reasons of what we were planning on doing. And if you look around today, there's quite a lot. I, again, I, I have the privilege of seeing some of this where I've actually seen believers in Jesus actually believe in Jesus, but they don't believe that he has any power. They don't believe he can do anything. They don't believe that he can help them in their life. He, they just think he's gone and he's in some heavenly place and that's it. But that's completely untrue, according to the Word of God. If that was true, then why would I have become a believer in Jesus? Why would I be following him the way that I do? He had to be different to the way that I was when I was in the New Age. And he did. He proved that to me for those 12 months that he was better and miraculous and he would help me in my life and guide me in my life. And there's scripture after scripture after scripture that describes that. But I want to describe two scriptures now in Timothy that I've been brought to very recently because of the seasons and what's happening around the world. The first one in 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Jesus is again talking and saying, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Now, listen to this, the rest of this, because it's almost like a list of ways that we're looking at what's in the world right now. It's almost like a self-proclaimed warning list. So, but know this, Jesus said, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such things, people need to turn away. That's a long list. But when I look at that, that's exactly the list that we, it's funny, I don't know if the guru got it from the Bible, but back when I was in the new age, that's what our guru had planned for us to create in the world for them to do that. So there was no godliness at all. Every one of those things, especially the lovers of self, that's an interesting thing. The whole new age, and even when you start to look at the, the new world religion they're trying to put in, and I'll mention that in a minute, is 
is it's it's so powerful because it's if you take away the devil, you take away an enemy, and then you start to take away and water down a god, then all you're left with is with you. And so then yourself, you, you become the God, you become a creator. And there's a lot of stuff out there that we, I used to teach and it's still out there now where it's all about you. You can, you can become wealthy. You can become and learn the principles. You can attract wealth. You can do this. You, you can heal yourself. You can do this. You can do that. All of these things have been brought into place so that just like the devil, when he, he fell because of his pride, it's the same thing that he's trying to instill into the earth today and especially to believers, that we are God and that we have that self. Another thing to, to note with um, New Age, just so that you're aware of this, and any spiritualism and anything that's out there from Hinduism, Buddhism, all of them, they all fit in the same category, is the very, very fact that with the lovers of self, when you do that, you take away the need for a God because you've become God. And so when you become God, then why do you need another God? And you get deceived with that and you open up the door to all sorts of um, doctrines of demons, which I'll cover in another scripture. But isn't it interesting? I, there's one thing that I also want to add here. When I came out of being a leader in New Age, when I renounced that and left it and started a walk as a believer and a follower of Jesus, one of the things I did was I was like, I'm a you know, sensible man. I'm intelligent. I've... I've you know, not just intelligent because I've studied or done things, but I just thought I have common sense. And so the first thing I thought was, how did I get deceived? How did I actually get deceived? How did people's opinions and spiritualism deceive me? How did I go for almost two decades of teaching things that were lies and doctrines of demons and yet not really understand that? Now, in that quest, the first three years, of me being a follower of Jesus, I wanted to study. And this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to go, okay, here are all the new age spirits and the new age names that are around that exist today. And here's all the practices that exist today. I wanted to find out where did they come from? How did they originate? How, how come they're so popular now and that everyone's running to them and, and half people think they're from God when they're not? And so I didn't necessarily trust New Age books or even, um, you know, books on Christianity. I, I did on the Bible. I totally trusted the Bible. But I wanted to find out where all these other things came from. So I spent three years going in and out of a library. I wasn't three years in a library, but I would go to the libraries and I would research history. I would find out about this spirit and that spirit and what happened here. And as I went backwards through time, several things I discovered very fascinating. Number one, several of these gods that are around now, like even a, the goddess Mother Earth, and everyone talks about Mother Earth rather than it's God's creation. And they talk about the universe and they talk about that. All of that, when you trace it all the way back through history, you get back to the origin of it. The interesting origin is actually listed in the Old Testament. 250 times in the Old Testament in history, God is warning people, don't follow the foreign gods. Those foreign gods from the Astroth Poles to, the, um, to Baal, to all of them, all exist today, but with different names. I found that then when I moved forward in my history and in my study, that each one of these foreign gods that God warned the people don't go after, started to change names or different practices as they moved through history and came forward. For example, Mother Earth, and, and even in my book, you can, you can, uh, which is called Authentic Awakening, about my testimony coming out, it actually talks about the, how would I say it, the actual progress of these philosophies and these things. So as they, they move forward, they then started to go through areas of Asia and China and Japan and Taiwan and, and different things got added from Buddhism to Hinduism or Taoism. All these different things got added, but the same thing as I traced it through to the name that's being used today. Isn't it interesting what we were warned so many thousands of years ago to stay away from the ways and the practices of the foreign gods but what happens is that they've now become, um, they've evolved into more modern terms and modern practices. And I will go into some of those practices and those true counterfeits soon in the sense of 
how they fulfill this scripture of then the world, the culture becomes unthankful, unholy, lovers of themselves, um, you know, lovers of pleasure. God having, I like this one, having a form of godliness, but denying its actual power. And God says, stay away from them. Isn't that, isn't that an interesting thing? And that's what I found when I did my study. I found that I didn't, these are all the same things that God had warned us about. Don't need to go near them again. Don't need to, to even enter into them because they actually are the exact same thing, but demonically change names into today and into the new age today. The other thing the enemy will talk about sometimes is a compromised word. And it's an interesting thing sometimes when people will bring out the Bible, but they'll change it slightly and they'll start to compromise. Again. Oh, yeah, but God doesn't really, there's no real hell or it really doesn't matter if I, you know, if I, I'm immoral, I can just repent later. There's even people that, that now have gotten to the point of that scripture where basically they, they, as believers of Jesus, will say, I can still sin and it's fine because the grace is already there. I'm already covered by that grace. No, the repentance is there. The availability to repentance is there so that I can repent from things that maybe aren't right in my life. That's what I, I'm, I get a bit of static about. I actually enjoy repentance. I didn't have repentance when I was in the new age and under all those demonic gods. I had no repentance. I had to suffer through a thing called karma. And the, the very, I'll actually explain about karma in the next show, but the, the very key thing about um, moving into the practices and the things that are of the enemy and the deception of that is that it starts to seep in and become like that scripture and affect our life. And then what we do is we deny then the power of God. We end up denying that. Um, which is just a very powerful thing. So in repentance, the reason that it's so passionate to me is that I actually, if I make a mistake, I don't intentionally want to sin. But if I make a mistake, my God loves me so much that I can actually repent and receive forgiveness. In the new age, you've got to actually work forgiveness and you've got to, you've got to do practices and all sorts of things. And then you still don't feel free. In God, when you ask for forgiveness, He says He forgets it completely. And you're actually a given Grace. You don't deserve it, but you're given grace by forgiveness. How powerful is that? In fact, I feel there's already there's some people that I'm talking to that even now that's triggering for you where you're saying, wow, I, I've done some things and I still can't get rid of this feeling of guilt or shame that the enemy's put on you. Well, I want to pray for you right now. Father, I take authority over that shame and over that guilt and I bind the enemy's works over those people in the name of Jesus. I bind you because it says if I bind you here, you're bound in the heavenlies and you are to leave their life. You are to get out of their life. And Father, now fill them with the Holy Spirit. Have the Holy Spirit come into their life to fill them with forgiveness. Give them an encounter. Give them an encounter with Jesus so that they will actually feel the love and the joy and the happiness, Father. I pray for that to be all over them. Just allow your heart to be filled. Allow your heart to be filled. Let the Holy Spirit fill you of getting rid of all forgiveness. All forgiveness is yours. It's all for you. All done. All shame and guilt is gone. All shame and guilt is gone. Now, if that was you, then please have a look at my resources. Get to, get to the free teachings I have on the app. Download it, Alan Strudwick Ministries. Go to the website, alanstrudwickministries.com. I want you to be able to understand the freedom that I get to live because I had worked for the enemy and now I work for God. I know the difference. And, and you can have a victorious life. So I'm wanting you to be able to move into using resources, not just the teaching I have here on the show, which is powerful enough, but get into the resources because they will help you have a victorious life. We'll be back with more of The Truth Project in just one moment. Did you know that there has been a 30-year top secret plan conceived by Far Eastern gurus? This plan has been deceptively hidden in the New Age religion to try and convert Christians and Jews in the West to embrace the false gods of Hinduism and Buddhism. Over two decades ago, Alan Strudwick was chosen as a child to be trained by leading gurus in the Hindu religion, whose mission was to infiltrate the church and convert Christians into Eastern religions. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. In this book, 
Alan retells his life journey of deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices that ends when he has a miraculous encounter with God the Father and Jesus. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age, Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Astrology, Reincarnation, Aura Cleansing, Astral Travel, Psychic and Palm Readings, Tarot Cards, Reiki Healing, and so much more. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. Understand that yoga is a demonic gateway opening doors for spiritual attacks. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. Welcome back to The Truth Project. Interesting thing, as I said to you before in the last segment about I wanted to study and I wanted to research back to find out why, how could I have been deceived? Why would I be deceived? The, the most fascinating learning I've ever had is, is learning and, and reading the Bible. The more I've read the Bible, the more I've found out about life, answers to life, answers to history, answers to how I'm to deliver the future, the, you know, and what I'm going to do with the past and everything. In fact, everything in my life, I found answers within the Bible. And so I looked at that after going all the way back and finding out that all the foreign gods that exist in the Old Testament have now all moved their way through to today, the same demons, same stuff, same, um, you know, in fact, even you could go to India today and you could go into some of the temples and you would see that they still practice certain things that we're practicing here in the West, but they practice it in such a way that spiritually they think that it's a um, way to Nirvana and they still believe it and still practice it. Um, even with some of them have got um, some of those temples or even got temple prostitutes and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's a terrible place to visit. And I, one thing that I wanted to mention was about karma and what, as a deception. I hear so many followers of Jesus talk about <laughs> <laughs> talking about, oh, it's just karma. Oh, it's just karma. Well, first of all, lack of knowledge, which is what the scripture had said before. I don't even know if half those people know what karma really means and what they're declaring out of their mouth. But karma basically is a, is a doctrine of a demon. It is a Hindu belief system that through history, as the race that lived above India came down in history and took over the, the people that lived in that region that's called India today, they needed to bring in something they could control. So they brought in a caste system so that, of course, they who were invading were the high priests and the high people spiritually. And then you would have the lower class and then you'd have the poor class. And then they developed a, a theory, which that's all it was, or a strategy to control through what the word is, is karma. Basically, what karma is this, is that karma is where you, as a human being, and I said this before, they believe that you actually evolve lifetime after lifetime. So as I'm evolving, when I die, according to the Hindus, if I die in this body, I come back another lifetime and I continue to live and I continue to evolve. A couple of things that are wrong with that. One is that biblically that doesn't exist. We're told we have one, but one lifetime. The second thing is, is that within karma itself, they say that you start off as almost like an inanimate object and then you progress. I don't know how a rock would progress spiritually, but you progress and you get to the point that you're then an animal and then you're, now hear this, I want you to hear this, then you're a woman and then you're a man. Yes, in their ancient scripts and even today in India, this is still practiced, that through karma, a woman cannot clear karma and evolve. The only way a woman in Hinduism can evolve spiritually according to their belief systems is if she serves man so well, almost like a slave, she can then, when she dies, ask Brahman, who's the head Hindu god, to come back as a man so that then she can start to clear the karma. And the idea of the karma is that you clear it out of your life. Sometimes it's quite painful to do that, but you clear it out of your life in such a way that you then evolve spiritually so that at some point your soul does not need to come back here to the planet. You go up into all the realms and the spiritual realms and up into Nirvana. Now, it's all deceptive. All right. It's all doctrines of demons. However, the reason it works in India is that it keeps control of the poor people. 
So I don't know if any of you have ever visited India, but when you travel in the streets, there are some very, very poor people. But the, and the reason they're there is that the Indian higher class are not allowed spiritually to help them because if they help them with money or with food, they are actually disrupting that person's spiritual karma of the progress. How demonic is that? How evil is that? That these people get to stay there and their fellow citizens will say, that's because they've got a clear karma, we can't help them. That's horrific. But that's how that works because you've got to remember who that doctrine originally is from. That, but that is a thing that unfortunately has started to happen in certain um, areas of believers in that happen in the world. And we need to get rid of that word because it's, we don't live by karma. We live by grace and we live by the power and the resurrection power of our Lord. Here's, a, here's an interesting scripture and it's called the great apostasy. I want to add something to that. I believe we are now living in the great apostasy. I believe it's now. Let me read this scripture to you. God showed me this prophetically that this is the season that was coming and I believe we're now in it. Timothy says this in 1 Timothy. Now the Spirit expresses, expressly says that in latter times, which we're in now, some will depart from the faith. Okay, so some people will stop believing in Jesus. And this is what they'll do. It says, giving heed to the deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared, with a hot iron, forbidding to, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God had created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Now let me just pull you this out a little bit because it's so apparent right now. Okay, so first of all, in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. I've seen that. Even in the last 15 months, I have seen pastors that I've known leave the faith. I've seen some question their faith. I even talked to a worship leader of a well-known church the other day and I found out that he was saying he didn't believe more than 10% of what he was worshipping and he's questioning God. I've heard of other stories of pastors I don't know that are leaving um, God, are leaving their marriages, are moving into homosexuality. There are all sorts of other different things. They're just walking away from God. They're losing their faith. They're departing from the faith. And then it says, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Somewhere along, they've given in to what those things are so that they end up as anti-God. Those are the things that, as I said, I was trained to be able to pull people out of those types of things of believing in Jesus. Another thing that it says here is, and doctrines of demons. They are doctrines of demons. They're the exact same doctrines that I would do. Remember putting in doubt, questioning, getting them to doubt God, blaming God for all the bad stuff. Then speaking lies and hypocrisy. Who's the father of lies? We're told in the Bible it's, it's the devil. He's the father of all lies. There are lies everywhere. I, I sometimes am trying to debunk things by research just because the first thing that comes out is because it was a lie. Um, so they're speaking lies and hypocrisy. Then having this, their own conscience seared with a hot iron. That's an interesting concept. I was um, talking to a good, good friend of mine that's, that's he's almost, he's, he's young, a young little boy, almost like, um, well, anyway, I, I won't say too much about him, but it was interesting because he was watching a preacher talk and when the preacher was talking, he said that he felt convicted. Now, he felt convicted about what? He just felt convicted about some things that were happening in his life. He wanted, he wanted to follow Jesus more. He had a hunger following more. That conviction is not a bad thing. That conviction is actually a good thing. But then on the other hand, I've met some people that are actually doing things that I would never even go near it. Like uh, they're actually illegal and even immoral things. And what they're doing is I ask them questions and you can tell their conscience has been seared. It's been seared with a hot iron, so they're not, even, they're not even allowing the Holy Spirit or allowing God to even touch them in their heart in any way. So that is happening today. That their, their whole conscience is seared. The other thing, forbidding to marry. That's an interesting thing. I see more people now all around the world that just aren't marrying. They just, and then some of them are forbidden. Not that it's a religious thing, but it's like, no, you don't get married. You've got to you know, live together for a couple of years. You've got to experiment. You've got to do that. I wouldn't recommend it, but that is what's happening. This is what it's doing. It's speaking about now. And this one, and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving. Now, I'm going to be careful with this. Um, when I was in the New Age, 
I was a vegetarian for eight years because that was put upon us. You had to be a vegetarian because of cows and other things were sacred to God and they were almost like gods and treated like gods. In India, you can see some people sometimes, they don't touch the cows. They'll even, they'll even I've seen it, run after cow dung because it's sacred and, and religious. I mean, how deceived is that? But the interesting thing is that some people have made it their religion not to eat certain foods or c certain meats, even though God has told us to do it. Now, if you want to be a vegetarian, go right ahead. I'm not saying you can't be a vegetarian. But it's interesting that thousands of years ago, we were told that people would abstain from foods that God had created to receive with thanksgiving. It's interesting that that's happening now. And then it says that those who believe and know the truth, okay, receive with thanksgiving. It's an interesting thing. So... Deception is there. It's been forewarned to us. As I said, I, was, I have the credentials because I was in deception and I was working for deception. And in that concept, we need to be careful, as I said, of the false teachers. And I just want to finish up with this. I, as I said, I was a false teacher. And um, there's, there's probably a list. I have here a list of almost like 12 people uh, 12 situations that I've come across, 12 things that I actually used to do that I want to um, bring into the next show with you. But for now, because I've been talking again about this whole end times and what's happening and, and the things that are around and, and about karma and all those types of things, again, I, I want you to go to my resources. I want you to get as much as you can. Go to my website, alanstradwickministries.com. There's, there's free resources. There's also, um, you can get, oh, I haven't even mentioned my book. You can get my book on the website, but you can get it on Amazon. In fact, um, Destiny Image has just launched it worldwide. You can get it wherever. It's called Authentic Awakening. It actually has uh, my full testimony in it, but it also has um, things about certain topics, which I will touch in the Truth Project, but it goes into great depth. When I mentioned about the study that I did, there's actually takes an example. Of, of Mother Earth, of how that went all the way back that actually was part of the asterisk poles. So asterisk poles and the asterisk goddess became eventually through all the years and centuries and millennials now being Mother Earth. And it's interesting, so the book goes into that with facts and things and history all the way through it so that you get the understanding of that. But at the same time, there's a one shop app, please, a ministry app, download it in Apple. Download it on Android, Alan Strudwick Ministries, download that. There's, there's question and answers. You can contact me. There's free teaching all the way through it. So that, that'll help you as well. And as I said, get the book. I just really, truly want to um, just pray a blessing over you right now, a blessing of, of faith, because fear is the opposite of faith. It needs to be faith. So I pray a blessing of faith over you that, that you actually have the gift of faith comes in these topics as you're moving forward. A gift of faith that comes upon you now in the name of Jesus. So it's touching you now. In fact, some of you are even physically feeling the increase of that faith right now. Amen. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com to connect with Alan, get questions answered, and submit your prayer requests. Download the ministry app and let Alan equip you and inspire you wherever you are. Find great teaching throughout his CDs, books, eBooks you can download, and more. And be informed with timely ministry, updates, and exciting interviews. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com.